I'm back, bitches. All about them springtime cocks and locks, baby. Are we ready to talk smut? No. Oh, spring in a glass. I know what you're all really here for, and it's the bikini yard. Hey, y'all, hey. <laughs> oh, that one got me. I am Chelsea of Knitting Tipsy, and welcome to episode two of the Knitting Tipsy vlog. If you've been here for a while, hi, so glad to have you back. And if you're new here, well, cheers, darling, and thanks for hanging out with me. Y'all, it is March already. The time has both flown and dragged on. Drug on. And honestly, it has been a hard start to the year. My mental health has been all over the place. I have had really great highs and I've had some really shitty lows. Um, kind of the lowest lows that I've had in a really long time, which is challenging for me because I am a perfectionist. I was an A plus student. So, you know, you go to therapy and then you do all this work on yourself. And then when you do hit low patches, sometimes it's like, oh, it's fine. You know, we have setbacks and that's just how progress is made. But when you really hit a low point, it's just, it's like ingrained in me that I'm like, what did I do wrong? I'm failing, all of these things. And it takes a lot to remind myself that this is a journey. <laughs> this is this is not a very linear graphical journey that we're on. We're gonna have ups and downs and 10 steps back and two steps forward. And some days are gonna be really hard fought and some days are gonna feel like the sun's never gonna come out again but it always does. So it, it's just been one of those months. I hope y'all are not feeling that way, but if you are, you are not alone. And that makes me feel some better sometimes to know that there's a lot of us going through this and that kind of human experience and solidarity truly means a lot sometimes. So trying to keep it real for y'all, I've been struggling, <laughs> but uh, today is a good day. I've been clawing my way out of this for a while and today's a really good day and I was like, I'm gonna film today on one of my good days. It took several good days. It's not like I picked the one good day and decided to film. That would not also be good for my mental health. But um, yeah, I'm excited to be hanging out with y'all. Tried this in February. I tried filming this vlog and I just was not, you could feel that it wasn't me. So I'm back bitches. And I hope you can feel that. I, I certainly can. The energy is here now. So once again, cheers. We're gonna be cheers on a lot. We're gonna be cheers on a lot this episode. So, all right. So that led very nicely into our first little section, which I always love to talk about is mental health and self-love. So, hmm, what tips and tricks do I have for you this month? Honestly, it is my number one go-to therapy tool. My therapist taught me this two or three years ago. And it has been a game changer, honestly. This is called T-charting. I think different mental health professionals might call it different things, but even as a teacher, yes, I am a former teacher of youths. <laughs> as a former teacher, we called this T-charting. So if you like to journal, great, you're gonna fit right in. If you don't, you don't have to do this. You could do this mentally, you could just picture it, but I, I really encourage you to write it down. This is such a cool technique to look back on and see how far you've grown and see the progress that you're making. What is a T-chart? A T-chart, I'm gonna insert some pictures over here because I did not plan enough for this uh, video here. So <laughs> I'm gonna insert pictures afterwards. A T-chart is where you draw on a piece of paper, a T to make a chart. You have two columns and we're gonna label the first column our negative thoughts, our initial thoughts. And the second column, we're gonna label reframed thoughts. So this is where another skill comes in that seems so obvious and so easy, and I promise you it is not, and it is noticing. In order to be able to teach art, you have to be able to notice your negative thoughts. I used to have this soundtrack going on in my head of negative thoughts consistently over and over. And I didn't even know it was there because I didn't notice it. It had always been with me. Just ways that I would put myself down. I, I tend to be a positive person on the outside and I'm a really good cheerleader for other people, but I'm not so great when it comes to myself. I'm much better than I used to be, 
But it took a long time for me to realize just how toxic my headspace was, how often I told myself I couldn't do things, how often I berated myself, how often I shamed myself. So many things, this negative soundtrack going on in my mind. So you have to start paying attention to those thoughts. You have to start catching them. And at first, if you can't do anything with them, that's okay. Just write them down. And I know that can feel scary. Sometimes we don't want other people to know about these scary thoughts that are in our brain or just these negative thoughts that are in our brain. But you don't have to show this list to anybody. This is just for you, yourself, and you. <laughs> but you want to try to grasp them and get them down on your initial thought, your negative thought chart. You can write them down and not even think about them again. If it feels too scary, just write them down and you can come back to them when you feel like you're in a better spot. So let me give you an example of a negative thought that sometimes creeps up in my mind. One of my biggest thoughts that comes up is that I am lazy and lazy leads to thoughts of I'm worthless. I don't do enough. I don't try hard enough. I'm not good enough. But it's this idea that when I'm not productive, when I'm resting, when I do things that aren't work, I'm being lazy and therefore I'm worthless. So I can take that thought and I can put it down in my chart. Come back to it later, come back when I'm in a good place. In your reframed chart, you wanna look at these thoughts and if it's too hard to be kind to yourself, which I've been there, <laughs> If it's too hard to be kind to yourself, you can pretend that it's a friend who has told you that they're having these thoughts. Or you can pretend that it's little you. You can pretend that it's a small child. Somebody that you love enough to want to help, to want to show how wonderful they are, is who you want to picture. And eventually, that person is going to be you. But if it's too hard for now, you can address it like it's somebody else. So when I think about the fact that a friend might come to me and say, you know, I, I, I'm lazy, I didn't do anything, I was so tired today, but I'm worthless and all of these things, the first thought that comes to me is, you do not have to earn rest. Rest is something that we are entitled to as human beings. We can't do our best work if we're not rested, if we're, we don't have the energy to do it. And sometimes the reason that we're not rested is because of depression, is because of anxiety, is because of, you know, raising small children and trying to be our best for other people. There are so many reasons that we can feel tired, but tired isn't bad and rest isn't bad. So I reframe that thought saying, first of all, you do not have to earn rest. Rest is a given. And then I might also reframe that thought talking about worth. My productivity does not equal my worth. That is a affirmation that I try to keep on repeat in my brain. My productivity does not equal my worth. If I do nothing but sit in a chair all day, I am just as worthwhile. I am just as worthy of love and appreciation and wonderful things in my life as I am on a day when I get so much done. My worth doesn't change due to my energy levels, <laughs> due to what I'm able to accomplish. And that's something that society teaches us is we have to accomplish things and we have to be productive, but it's not true. It's just not true. It's hard. Those are both things that have taken me a long time to learn, but those are things that I tell myself and I write in that column because I would want a friend to believe that. And I want myself to believe that too, because it's true. Something else that I might think about myself on some days, um, I've struggled a little bit with my body lately and my body image. So if I have thoughts like, um, I look horrible in this dress, or I can't wear this, my stomach's sticking out. That was actually a thought I had the other day, was I can't wear this, look at my stomach sticking out the top of my crop. <laughs> it happens. I write that down in the negative thoughts column. And I'm very happy to say, I don't believe that thought anymore, but it still crops up in my head sometimes. So when I'm ready to reframe, I address that thought. And I say, guess what? Tummies protect organs. They don't have to be flat. 
Your stomach does not have to be flat to be beautiful. Curves are beautiful. Rolls, they're normal. They're Even if you don't think that they're beautiful, they're fucking normal. It's okay to have a tummy. It's okay to have rolls. It's okay to have all of these things. If you love your outfit and you think the only thing that's ruining it or messing it up is your stomach or your arms or something, that's not true. Your body doesn't mess up a cute outfit. You look cute in an outfit because it's cute and your body's normal and fine. So I remind myself of that in that column. I also remind myself that I don't have to wear clothes that make me feel uncomfortable. If I have a day where as much as I want to, you know, convince myself that I do look good and I can wear the thing with the tummy, I would rather be comfortable than self-conscious. So maybe I switch it up. Maybe I wear something different. Maybe today is not the day that I project body confidence everywhere in that one outfit. I want to make sure that my body feels respected, that I feel comfortable, and that whatever outfit I do wear makes me feel confident. So reframing that thought might be reminding myself that my body's normal, my body's beautiful as it is, but I don't have to wear things that don't make me feel comfortable. And if I do choose to wear the thing, I'm going to rock it. I'm a fucking rock it because my body's rocking. Anyways, those are two examples, but T-charting really does help. Um, try jotting down those thoughts. If, if all you do is notice your thoughts, that's fine too. Keeping that list of those negative thoughts. It can feel scary having all of these negative thoughts. If you're unable to reframe a thought by yourself, you can reach out to a friend or a family member that loves you and maybe they can help you with these thoughts too. Sometimes I struggle with particular thoughts and I go to my husband or I go to my best friend and I'm like, okay, I'm having this scary thought and um, it makes me uncomfortable, but can you help me? And they are so willing to do it. Sometimes you just need somebody who truly loves you to be like, girl, that bullshit. <laughs> and to get into that mindset of being a friend to, to yourself, to your mind, to your body, so. That is a very short explanation for T-charting for mental health. If you want me to get more into this and do a separate video on some of my mental health techniques, just let me know in the comments. But we're gonna try to keep things short today and just give you a little, a little tidbit that maybe will help you with your mental health. You also wanna point out I am not a mental health professional. So these are just things that I have found worked in my own life. Um, a lot of them are tips that I've either read or have been provided to me by my therapist, but I really don't, I am not dispensing <laughs> medical advice by any means. But please, if you're really struggling, reach out to a loved one, reach out to a mental health care professional because it does get better. I promise. I promise. I've been there. I've been in the dark. There is light. Who's ready for some cocks and mocks? All right, guys, I'm so bummed. I had, well, not so bummed because I did what was right for me in postponing some of these videos, but I really did have some fun Valentine's Day cocktails and some really fun St. Patty's Day cocktails picked out for y'all. But I just was not, I was not in a place where I could make this video and get those things ready. If you're on my Kofi or my email list, you got some freebies where these are involved. I highly recommend checking out my email list and my Kofi if you want extra content and the chance to meet virtually with me twice a month. But I have whipped together two really fun cocks and mocks for you for spring. Our cocktail this month, I have mentioned multiple times, I am not a gin girl. I am a bourbon girl through and through. I love most alcohol. <laughs> They really do. <laughs> Vodka, tequila, rum, bourbon, whiskey. It's all good. But the one alcohol that I tend to stay away from, it's just not my favorite, is gin. Well, that's all changing today, y'all. Today's cocktail, this month's cocktail, is the classic gin fizz. And if you've never had one, it is so springy and light and just... I'm obsessed. I may actually order this out at a bar. It's delicious. Where has it been all my life? And it's so easy to make. So I'm going to show y'all how to make a gin fizz. I promise it's super easy. You need minimal ingredients at your house. I'll show you that in one second. But I also want to show you the mock of the month. Now this one I made up on my own. I'm sure there's a recipe that probably encapsulates all of this. But I love lavender. Oh my god. I love like lavender coffees. 
my jam. So I always keep some lavender syrup at the house. I know that's not a super common ingredient that you might have at your house, but you can get it on Amazon for pretty cheap. I think this one also tastes super springy. It's lavender and mint and bubble water and a little bit of lemon. It's super easy. It's so refreshing. And it just gives you a little something extra whenever you want to have something fun with your friends and a little fizzy, a little springy, a little yummy. We're going to call it the lavender fizz. <laughs> That's probably a different cocktail, but off the top of my head, we have our lavender fizz mocktail and our gin fizz cocktail. So let me show you all how to make those next. told you it was easy. <laughs> They're both super fucking simple, but I think that's what makes them fun and delicious. So let me know if you try these out or if maybe gin fizz is already your go-to. Um, I may be a convert now. So cheers y'all. Are we ready to talk smut? <laughs> I was in a bit of a slump, um, a reading slump, honestly, a lot of slumps. 
we've talked. But I started out the year getting into Crescent City to because I hadn't read it yet, but I had been on my list and I really wanted to participate in some of the super fun activities for the Crescent City release party that my friend Sarah had, which was amazing, regardless of what I think about the book. It was amazing. If you're in Orlando, you really need to check out Pinky Orlando. My friend Sarah Taylor is just the absolute coolest. She's always throwing events. Pinky Orlando is the coolest boutique in in Central Florida, honestly. Uh, you can get your nails done. She does tattoos. She's done several of my tattoos. So she hand poked this one. She's done, I had to remember which side of my body some of these are on, all of my hand tattoos. She's just a badass. Eyebrows, eyelashes. It's also a clothing boutique and you can get witchy and fun, just trinkets and knickknacks and accessories and so many things. Check it out if you're ever in Orlando. Pinky Orlando. But anyways, um, I won't go into it too much because I don't, I don't want to make this a negative video, but I did not like, I did not care for the third Crescent City book. I know a lot of people felt like me, but a lot of people loved it. And I do not yuck yums. If you loved it, then I'm so happy for you. And that is awesome. And yay. It was not my cup of tea. I was also reading it whenever I was in um, a depression bout and there was a, so much, it was a hard book to get through. Like the, the trigger warnings, there was torture there. Like, it was just, it was, it was really rough. Um, so I actually thought I was gonna DNF it. If you don't know what DNF is, it's it, like did not finish. But I, and I ended up putting it down for a couple weeks, got into the book series I'm about to tell you about, and then picked it back up. I think the point where I picked it back up was also where things started to pick up in the book. But it was like, I think we were like 60% through the book, 60 or 70% through the book. And I'm just like, if it takes that long for a book to like have any moment of joy or to have any moment of laughter... <laughs> or to get good, not for me. So I did enjoy the rest of the book, but I think overall, I didn't care for it. I didn't hate it, I just, I did not care for it. Um, and that series in general, I really did like the series, but if you're not a Sarah J Mass fan, she has written Throne of Glass, my favorite of the series. It's, that series changed my life. It changed my life, it will always be with me. I can cry at the drop of a pin if somebody says certain lines from the book. It's it's just amazing, so highly recommend. But she's also the author of the Akatar series, A Court of Thorn and Roses. I fucking love that series too. I do like Throne of Glass better. Who am I? Um, but that series is also amazing. And then this is her other series, Crescent City. It's a more modern series. And I did I loved book one. I loved book one. Book two I really liked. So <laughs> overall, I liked the series, but yeah, not my favorite. Anyways, that was a really long way to tell you that I kind of was in a slump. That was the only book I had been reading and just nothing, nothing felt right. Nothing. I didn't want to read. I wanted something that was going to make me feel emotions because when I'm in a depressive bout, I want to feel safe emotions. I want to feel emotions that aren't mine, but I still want to feel things because apathy sucks. So I reached out to my friend Abby of Goliath Frog Crafts. She is my romance and smut guru. And she said, oh my God, you have to read this book. This book is so incredible. And I'm like, all right, tell me. If you like these tropes, you're gonna like this book. Who did this to you? One horse, one bed forced proximity, enemies to lovers, found family. This book has Greek mythology. It has circus, mythical creatures. It's amazing. If you like romanticy, I really think you'll like this series. What is the series, Chelsea? This is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. This book came out in 2016. I heard nothing about it until Abby brought it up. And now I feel like it's starting to make a little bit, it's getting popular. People are starting to take notice. And I am so glad because it does, I think it deserves so much. So our first story starts off with our female main character. Her name is Kat. She is 
a soothsayer, but we know there's something more to her. She's working at a circus. And right off the bat, I was a little like, like the very first chapter within the first couple pages, she's already meeting our MMC. And for me, like, I like some world building at first. So I was kind of like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be it. She changed my mind in like three chapters. It's so good. So we meet our, our main male character and not giving anything away. It's in the description of the book, but he's already going to go ahead and kidnap her because he knows what powers she has and he really needs them to help save and protect his realm. The banter, the bickering, it's so good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's a bit of a slow burn. Um, not a bit, it's a slow burn, especially book one. It's gonna take a while for things to get steamy. Oh, but when they do, it's it's good, y'all. We are also gonna discover lots of family issues in this, so it's like a safe place to feel some feelings, um, betrayals and heartbreak, and oh, the, the who did this to you vibes are so strong, they're so strong, but, what I love about it is our female main character is such a fucking badass. Like she is an ass kicker. She takes no shit. She gives the shit. She's just the shit. So <laughs> I really, really loved it. Book one, absolutely my favorite in the series. Now this is a currently four book series. I actually think there might be five with a novella. I have, I have yet to read the novella because I don't like that character. <laughs> But it's The Kingmaker Chronicles. Book two, I loved, I adored, I will say, are, I, I'm really trying, because I am a person who loves spoilers, so I'm really trying to make this a spoiler-free review and, and uh, recommendation for y'all. Uh, our MMC, it, it was a challenging little bar part at the beginning to get through because I did feel like it was very out of character for the MMC. I personally was yelling at our female main character, like, girl, run. Like, I don't know what happened to him, but this is fucked up. Like, this is not healthy. I guess he makes up for it. <laughs> I'm still personally a little peeved at him, but yeah, he, he does make up for it. And it's, it's romanticy. So if he didn't have some red flags, would he... We, I mean, we love a morally gray man, but he's not morally gray. That's the thing in this. Like, he's kind of the hero kind of guy. Um, well, he does give some, I'll burn the world down for you vibes. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. If you have read this series or if you choose to read it and you want to come back, let me know if you think Griffin is morally gray or if he is like our hero savior kind of complex with just some I'll burn the world down for you vibes. Let me know what you think. Book three, again, great. Loved it. Felt like some of the things were a little bit repetitive, but I was so invested in the story and <sighs> Lasai, it was just, it was wonderful. So that is the Kingmaker Chronicles. Book one is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. Highly recommend trying it out. Book four of that series is our main characters are in it, but they are no longer our main characters. We are um, focusing on a different character and her romance with another character in the series. And it's so good. It's so good. I really like that one too. So yeah, this series got me out of my reading slump. I love... I love romanticy. I love Greek mythology. And it's not, it's not necessarily like traditional Greek myth. It's Greek mythology with the author's twist, which I think makes it really fun. That is my recommendation to you for this month to check it out. Before we move on from books, I do want to say I know I have been teasing and talking about the romance recommendation book list, the smut book list that is coming. I do promise it's coming. It's just... I, my mental health has not really allowed me to focus on a lot of things, so I hope you'll grant me some grace, and I do promise that that's going to be coming this spring, early summer at the latest, hopefully, but um, y'all know I love my smut and I want to share it with you, so make sure you're on my email list because that's where some of that information is going to go out, and then other, um, there'll be even more detailed smut book recommendations going to my Kofi members, so you can always sign up for that in the description below. I'm a chatty Kathy today. I know what you're all really here for, and it's the bikini yarn. 
All right, y'all, next up we are talking bikini yarn. This is maybe one of the most asked questions that I get on my Instagram and just as a maker who has somehow found herself in the bikini realm. When I first started making and designing, like bikinis were not something that I thought I was gonna get into. My very first bikini design was back in 2019, 2020 and it was my basic stitch bikini. I cannot tell y'all how scared I was to put out this pattern. I found myself in a place where there wasn't a bikini that fit me the way that I wanted. I am a curvy girl, um, even though my body is currently bigger than it was back in 2019 and 2020, I've always been curvy and I wanted something that was low rise, but not too low rise. I wanted something that fit my breasts great. I'm always a different size in my tops and bottoms. And I love the fact that with handmade items, we can tailor our clothing to exactly how we want it to fit. So I created for myself a bikini that I felt fit me perfectly. Like it was exactly how I wanted. And then I wanted to see if I could take like the measurement that I, the co percent coverage of my ass and apply that to all other asses. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could do it and I was terrified to fail. I was really afraid that it wouldn't work out, that I was gonna waste testers time, that I was gonna waste my own time and that this was just gonna be a huge failure of a project. I think I made that bikini in every size before I sent it out to testers. <laughs> I was in Target with a tape measure measuring crotch gussets, the, the piece that goes over your cooch, because there's no information out there. There's lots of information on, you know, how to grade a sweater pattern, how to do certain things with sweaters. There's like not much out there when it comes to your, your, your cooch and your tits. Like it's just, there's not a lot of information. So I had to just kind of figure it out. And that's what I did. It took a lot of trial and error. My testers were so amazing, but we got a bikini that fit so many different bodies, like really small bodies with, you know, beautiful, tiny, tiny boobies, um, super curvy bodies with big, beautiful bellies and, and nice, huge, juicy asses. <laughs> we did it all. We had all the body types and I, can't tell you how fucking ecstatic I was that um, it worked. It somehow worked. Don't doubt yourself. You can do hard things. Anyways, with my first couple bikini designs, um, I was still learning about yarn. So if you ever see in, especially like my basic stitch bikini, that is made for DK and I think it's worsted weight, like DK worsted weight. That's a sunbathing bikini. And that's really what I think is the biggest, the biggest thing I wanna talk about whenever we talk about bikini yarns is what is the purpose of your bikini? Are you going to sunbathe in it? Which is great. I still own several bathing suits that are sunbathing suits. I'm not gonna wear them into the water. Or do you want something that you can go swimming in because you're gonna use different yarns? So let's talk about sunbathing bikinis first because it's a lot easier to find those yarns. If you want a sunbathing bikini, I really recommend cotton or bamboo yarns. Again, you could make a, an Aran weight or a bulky weight bikini if you want it. And I have seen some bulky weight bralettes that are adorable that you could totally wear to the pool or to the beach. I think maybe a bulky weight bottom would be a little uncomfortable, but it may, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. What I recommend for bikinis is a fingering weight or sport weight cotton or bamboo yarn. A few of my favorites, I really love Hobie's 8-4 Rainbow Cotton. It comes in so many gorgeous colorways and it's cheap. Uh, it's Hobie ships super quickly, so it's relatively easy to get. And I have several bikinis made with this. I'll show y'all, this is my, we'll start with a knit bikini. This is my Florida Babe bikini, which I used Hobie 8-4 Cotton. And here's the thing, I do wear this in the water. I actually wear it in the water often. But you have to be aware you're gonna be wet in this bikini all day. 
cotton does not dry super quick. Doesn't mean you can't wear it into the water. I know that there are bikini designers out there who get very angry because they use cotton yarn and they're like, you can absolutely wear this into the water. And I don't disagree with them. I just think there are, it's not gonna act like a swimsuit fabric. You're gonna be damp for quite a long time. Even in the sun, if you're laying out, you're gonna be damp in some places that maybe don't see the sun as much. But I don't think that should deter you if it doesn't bother you. If that's what's available to you and you don't mind that, then cotton is great for whether you're sunbathing or you're in the water. I do caution again, you could get what I lovingly refer to as diaper booty. When you come out of the water, things sag a little bit and you might get an excess of water in your, in your under gut cheese. If you give it a squeeze as you're coming out of the water, it's not so bad, but cotton does stretch. So if you're going to use a cotton yarn or a bamboo yarn, I do recommend adding elastic to your leg straps and elastic to the top. It's gonna make sure that your bikini does not fall off you in the water. If you're not gonna wear it in the water, you're fine. You're fine. It's gonna look great, you're gonna look hot, and it makes for a very, comfortable, soft, gorgeous bikini. So here is my Florida Bay bikini. With this bikini, you have options for your straps. You can make uh, crocheted straps, which are super comfortable, and actually two of my other bikinis use them. The sample that I pulled out, I did use um, sewn straps, if you're comfortable with a sewing machine. <gasps> but they're really fun. Um, mine aren't the best ever like can I find you even like sewing them on I'm telling you, it looks great on my body but like when you look close like I hand sewed these together it's not the best um yeah you can just see like it's certain parts I'm not the best sewist it is something that I want to work on but you don't have to be the best this looks hot on me I get so many compliments when I wear it and you know not the best sewist but it works out. Florida Bay Bikini is one example that uses Hobie cotton. Another yarn that I really like, it is again Hobie, but there are different kinds of cotton and bamboo, bamboo yarns. But this is the Hobie Rainbow Bamboo. I couldn't find one that has a label. But I used, I used this yarn, oh, there's the bottoms, to make my Shell Yeah Bikini. Um, I have a couple different samples when I get into actual, what I consider like swimsuit yarns. I'll show you the other one. But this is um, my Shelya Tankini pattern. This is a made to measure size inclusive pattern. All of my bikinis are size inclusive, but this one allows you to use your own measurements and you can make it low waist, you could make it high waist. Um, you can make your tankini as long or as short if you want. Like this one is a little bit longer. It's kind of like a like a little crop top bralette length. Um, and it's really fun. I did use the Hobie bamboo yarn with this one. And again, it has elastic because I do sometimes wear it into the water. But here's the thing that I want to let you know. If you're listening to this and you're like, great, I'm just going to use cotton and bamboo. I don't mind being wet. I'll squeeze out my ass. There's a few other things that you need to know if you're going to wear it into the water or if you're going to wear it out in the sun. I hope it'll show up on camera. Can you see these little bleached spotches? It doesn't make me sad enough that I'm not going to wear it, but honestly, it makes me a little sad. I put all this time in and didn't realize that the chlorine from the pool in Mexico, the first time I wore it into the water, was going to um, discolor my my bikini. I don't know if it's gonna show up in the straps, but the straps are really discolored. Um, it was a little bit heartbreaking. Again, it's not gonna stop me from wearing it, but um, just keep that in mind that chlorine and the sun can bleach the dyes that are used in cotton and bamboo yarns. Um, I feel like it didn't happen as much in my bottoms which is odd because they were completely submerged in the chlorine. So I'm wondering if it was like a combination of the sun and the chlorine. But um, yeah, it, it is a great affordable option, but just keep that in mind. Let's talk about bikini yarns. 
swimsuit yarns. I don't know if other um, people call them this, but this is just what I call them because I do feel like out of all the yarns on the market, these are so good for wearing in the water, for creating your swimwear. We're gonna start out with the yarn that I first learned about with bikini yarns, and it is Elise Diva Stretch. There are many different kinds of Elise Diva yarns. You gotta make sure you get the stretch if you want it to be a bikini yarn. Now this is a Turkish yarn. It can be a little more challenging to get, but I will put in the description a link to the seller that I love on Etsy. It is perfect yarns. I've had such great customer service with them. Um, this is a good place to get your bikini yarns online. This yarn is 92% microfiber and 8% PBT elastic. That elastic makes your yarn super stretchy. <laughs> this means it's gonna mold and form to your body. It's strong, it's durable. Honestly, when you feel it, you can tell like, oh, this is more like fabric-y than some of like the cottons and stuff. Like you, it almost feels more like a bikini fabric without being a fabric. I mean, you're creating the fabric, but you know. And the nice thing about PBT is that it gives yarn color fastness and UV resistance. So you can wear this in the chlorine, in the salt water, in the sun, and the color isn't gonna fade. So nice to have that comfort. I'll show you one of the, uh, I, I also made the bottom, I just honestly couldn't find it. But one of the bikinis that I made with Elise Diva Stretch, this is my skimpy stitch bikini top. And I did the, the two different colors. I just love how rich some of these colors are too. But this, I did not add elastic to. I feel with this yarn, you don't have to. Honestly, with bottoms, I usually do add it in anyways, just for extra security. But with the top, it, it has really good stretch to it. It's already gonna mold and form to your body. So you don't have to add the elastic if you don't want to. You absolutely can, but you don't have to. This bikini, it still takes longer to dry than a bikini that you buy at the store or that you would make on a sewing machine with like fabric, but it takes a lot less time to dry than a cotton bikini. It's much faster drying with that microfiber. One of the things I don't like about Elise Diva Stretch, it is thin. Like, I struggle to say lace weight. I do feel like it's a, maybe a little heavier than a lacelet weight, but you're gonna wanna hold this double. Let me show you. This sample I held, the Elise Diva, let me make sure I'm not speaking out my ass, triple. So to achieve gauge for my skimpy stitch um, bikini pattern, I held this yarn triple and I still feel like the fabric, it doesn't feel bulky, um, but yeah, held triple, which for some people that's a deal breaker. I understand that many yarn and balls and everywhere. I get it. I love it, but I get it. Here's a sample that I made where I held the yarn double and I just want to show you, it's so much thinner. This is my basic stitch bikini, which it's a little airier if you can see the fabric that I created. This one's a little more open. If you see like, you're not gonna see a nipple through this one. When this stretches on your body, you might. Doesn't bother me, might bother some. You can always line your bikinis. I have a great tutorial for that if you check it out. But um, it's, it's much lighter and when I hit gauge, I had a much more open fabric. So Elise Diva Stretch held double much thinner. So I, I feel like that's the, the drawback with the Elise Diva Stretch. Now, if you want something that's more of a true fingering weight and is a little bit softer, but I would say a bit harder to find, you're gonna wanna go with Himalaya Salinda Stretch. This is another Turkish yarn. You can also find it on Perfect Yarns, the link I'm putting through. But this yarn is 93% acrylic, shocking I know, and 7% PBT. When I first read the acrylic, I'm like, there's no fucking way. I'm not putting something acrylic in the water. It works, it works. The treatment process they use on it, which hopefully isn't bad for the environment, to be honest, I haven't looked. Please don't tell me if, no, you should tell me if it is, but please don't tell me if it is. But with the PBT elastic, this yarn is just a little bit thicker than the Elise Diva Stretch, so you can use it held single, or you could double it up. 
but um, you can absolutely use this held single to achieve a beautiful bikini. And let me show you. This is another sample of my Shelia Tankini, but it's made with this uh, Himalaya Cylinder Stretch. The fabric is soft like a cotton, like a really soft cotton, but so stretchy. That elastic in it is phenomenal. With this sample, I'm gonna show you my crotch. The gusset, get your head out of the gutter. <laughs> but I did line this one with some bikini fabric which makes it really nice and gives it kind of that profesh feeling. If you're uncomfortable putting your hoo-ha directly on your yarn, doesn't bother me, but it could bother some. But you can always line your bikinis. Um, one of my testers for the Shelia Tankini, she lined her whole bikini. She didn't like having skin exposed um, above her derriere and on her hips. So she actually lined the entire bikini with like a pretty color underneath and it was fabulous. How much sewing you wanna do is up to you. But this yarn is just, oh, it's so good. Um, I do have a beaded tutorial for the pattern if you wanna add beads to the pretty shells, you can totally do that. But this is another great yarn. Um, it's just a little harder to get. And the last bikini yarn that I'm going to recommend is one of my favorites. This is Vegan Sock Yarn. I now actually have two favorite dyers who make this, but I have to shout out the beautiful, the wonderful LaRue Cotton. She worked with me on my Knit Stars design for crafting bikinis that fit your body. I'm gonna pop in an image of the bikini that I designed for Knit Stars. There's some tricks and tips for knit bikinis also, but I walk you step-by-step step through making this crochet bikini. I absolutely love the colorway that we came up with together. It's called Beach Day. Beautiful pinks and pastels and wonderfulness. Kathleen sells a lot of this vegan sock and it's for people who want a vegan yarn but that has a lot more stretch elastic return properties but they don't want to but they want something plant-based. So at first she was just calling this her vegan sock and suggesting it for socks and other garments. But I now think on her website, she also lists it for bikinis because it works so well. Her vegan sock base is 40% tensile, 40% organic cotton and 20% elastic. And if you can see the texture of this yarn, it's so, fun. It, it has kind of a grippier texture, which you want with your bikini and look at this beautiful stretch. This colorway is called Pie Crest and I have big plans for this colorway this year in a one piece. Yes, you've heard it here first, folks. I am going to be making a one piece design with LaRue Cotton Yarn. Truly, I don't know a lot of dyers who work with Vegan Sock, but another dyer that I absolutely love who has just gotten into um, more plant-based yarns, and she has a vegan sock that I'm so excited to try out, is Tropical Yarny. So you can look at those two if you want to support a small business and indie dyers. LaRue Cotton and Tropical Yarny have beautiful vegan sock yarns. And let me show you not only that bikini that I designed for Knit Stars, but I also recreated a skimpy stitch bikini with LaRue Cotton, this is one of her colorways. It is so light, it is light as a feather, which I just love. And I held this one single to create this and it's beautiful, there is no nip slippage. Um, I did not add elastic to the top, but I did to the bottoms. These are a pair of thong bottoms um, and I did add elastic all the way through and the fit is, it's magnificent. That's another, another, look at this, look at the stretch, look at the stretch. It's gonna really hug those curves. So those are some of my favorite bikini yarns. I do highly recommend learning how to add elastic to your bikinis. I think it's gonna make all the difference in your fit. Again, you do not have to. Some people love the fit without it, no judgment, but I think it's a really helpful technique to know. Anyways, let me know what further questions you have about bikini yarns. You can pop them into the comments. Again, I am not the 
end-all, know-all master of bikini yarns, but I do feel like I've learned a lot in my designing of bikinis and my working with so many different bikini yarns. So if you have any questions or comments, well, let me know below. We have made it to our last section of this vlog. I do feel like this might be a longer one, especially with all that bikini yarn talk, but I hope y'all loved it. Our last section is our lifestyle section here at Knitting Tipsy. And I had to put in this maker interview that I did with my beautiful friend, Abby of Goliath Frog Crafts. Back in February, I flew by myself to New Jersey in the middle of winter to visit my beautiful friend, Abby. I don't like the cold. I don't like the snow. That is how much I love Abby that I braved all of those elements just to get to her. <laughs> and if you wanna see what a great time we have, we had, I did put a video of our weekend together. It's approximately 30 minutes long. There's a lot of drunk Chelsea in there because we went to a hockey game and her husband needed a booze partner. Twist my arm. <laughs> but you can check that out. I'll put the link in the description below. But I think Abby is one of the most talented knit artists that I know. Um, she is just so like techniques, scary things to me, like steaking or a variety of, she's just so good at. She's also my sock guru. If you need any sort of help with socks, reach out to Abby. She's a badass. I did a little maker interview with her so that you guys could get to know her more so that we could talk about more nitty things. And yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop this, that in next. I will meet y'all back here at the end of that video. Hey y'all, hey. I am here with the beautiful Abby of Goliath Frog Crafts. How long have we been friends now? I feel like it's been a few uh, years. Years. Um, we did, what was it, a test knit together for... In like 2017 or 2018? Um, gorilla? It was, yeah, it was the Gorilla Knits. Beverly set. The Beverly set. Which is a really cute set. And you were still Rose and Rosé. I was, back in the day. Mm -hmm. And we did that test knit together. Yes. Um, and, but we didn't like, we like were friends, we didn't, but we didn't yeah, really we didn't talk hit it like off a then. lot. Like yeah. we didn't like, yeah. And then maybe like what, a year or two ago, we started like talking more. Yeah. And, and then, then it was like every, constant contact. Every day. <laughs> Then it turned into every day. If I don't talk to Abby every day, it's like, <laughs> something's missing Something's today. wrong. What's wrong? I haven't I haven't heard from Chelsea in a while. I'll plug like... the Marco Polo app. If y'all don't have it, it is such a fun app. It is hit or miss for some people. I only use it to talk to you. Well, I, <laughs> I've gotten a lot of people onto it. And it's like virtual walkie-talkie style thing. But you can leave a message. You can watch it live. It, it is, I just think it's nice. And you feel like you have that contact. It's yeah. like FaceTiming, but on your own time. Like you can step away if you need to and the other person can keep talking. You can pause it mm -hmm. and come back and pick up, mm -hmm. which is why I like it. But yeah, I, I feel like I've developed a lot of close friendships yes, yes. through that app. And I, you, you, I think, talk to like a lot more people. Yeah, I have like 30 friends on Marco Polo that I talk to pretty consistently. So. Yeah, I, I just use it to talk to Chelsea. Just yeah. me. I got my mom to get it, but she like it fell off. For my mom's too. on it. Yeah. Yeah. She did. And we say like, oh, I'm gonna go polo someone. My mom says that she and all her friends are now on it and they, they call it the Marco. So like they Marco people, I polo people. Yeah, I say polo, I polo. Of course it's a generational <laughs> thing, but. Yeah, so even though we've been friends for a really long time and we talk every day and we have movie nights together virtually mm -hmm. and we walk on the treadmill together yeah. and chat, this is our first time meeting each other in person. So Chelsea came all the way here in February. In February. <laughs> to New I Jersey. In New Jersey in the snow just to sit on my couch and hang out it's for like love, baby. two and a half days, kind of, yeah. basically. Well, we, we knew we were going to be on the couch the whole time. Yes, that, wasn't that was it. planned. Yeah. That was planned. That was planned. We were like, yeah, you know, just come to come meet me. But both of us like to just sit quietly on the couch and not like be pressured in yep. social situations to make like a ton of conversation and stuff like that. Yep. And that's what we did. We literally just sat on our corners of the couch with our whips. We took like three naps each. We did. Yes <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday. And um and watched the nanny all day. Yeah, we had decided we had talked <laughs> prior. We were like, oh do we want to put on an audiobook right. and like listen to a series? Do we want to start like a movie trilogy or something? And we stumbled across the nanny. It was just like like that '90s <laughs> nostalgia and the fashion, and it's a good thing to put on because if we had put an audiobook on, we would have had to be listening. And the we whole would time. have we fell asleep too many times. Yeah. We wouldn't have, you know, yeah. been able to pick 
pick up or concentrate. But with the nanny, we could like walk in and out. Like I was like in and out doing things around the house and we both get a shower, you come back and you're like, yeah. why is she candy striping? Oh, yeah. because, oh, oh, okay, cool. And then you can just keep watching. <laughs> we keep so. picking up, yeah. yeah. So, so it, was, it was a perfect episode. We highly recommend. Um, and there's so many fucking episodes. We watched it's that long. all day yesterday. Like starting probably at like 10. Nine or or ten. Yeah, then, 9 yeah, or 10. Yeah. We put that on and we're only in season two. So. <laughs> yeah. There's quite a few episodes and to watch. Satur- so Saturdays, today is Monday, but Saturday we went to a hockey game, mm-hmm. an outdoor hockey game. And we sat in the freezing cold all day. It's so true. that's why yesterday we were like, we were totally toast. We were just... Dead to the world. It was dead lovely. Dead to the world, it yeah. Was yeah. And we got some good work done on our whips, which was really mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's been our weekend. But I wanted everybody to see my beautiful Abby. And Abby, yes. tell us, when did you start getting into the yarny life? I mean, I started knitting when I was 10 years old. Mm-hmm. So I've been knitting for over 20 years and crocheting. Um, I think I was... When I really started like crochet, because I knit, I was a knitter. Knitter first. And then I taught myself to crochet probably when I was around 15. Mm-hmm. And um, I had known how to chain before then. Yeah. But that's when it like really clicked. And I was like, oh, this is how this you is how go you back make this. Yep. and forth. And make a fabric. I could make chains. And I used to make chains. And I would just make ball, like turn a ball of yarn into a ball of chain. And then use it to knit? No. <laughs> I had it in my stash. I just balls of chains. I, I like just got rid of this like not that long ago. Just That's balls so of like chains. Um, so I, I didn't know how to go back into the the chain row. Um, so when I was probably about fifteen, I learned how to to. I actually taught myself to crochet. So I was making blankets for people, and I learned how to do like amigurumi and things like that. Um, and I was making like little stuffed animals. Mm-hmm. And then um, in college, I like picked knitting back up. Right. Um, and then I kind of stopped crafting for a little while because I was finishing, you know, my degree. I, yeah. And then I went and um, went back for my master's. And every once in a while, I would make like small projects. <clears throat> but when I finished my master's, is like when I really yeah. got back, back into, into like knitting with a capital K, <laughs> yes. I call it, because that's when I started. Wait. Knitting with a capital K. With a cap, they're all capitals. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's really when I started like making garments yeah. and things like that. And that was probably 2017, 18. Mm-hmm. And then you know from that's there. That's like when I got into it too. Like started yeah. picking things and up. buying like a ton of yarn, more stash. Like not just going to like which nothing wrong with just going to like Michaels and Joanne no, either. No, nothing at all. But, yeah. but my stash up to that point had been like fully fully acrylic because I was yep. not like I wasn't really. Uh, Who's crying? I couldn't justify doing anything more than that either. And I didn't want to spend, you know, lots of money on anything. And I was just making really, at that point, all I knew how to make were blankets and stuffed animals, which all you want really for blankets and stuffed animals most of the time is going to be acrylic. Yeah. Because it's, it can be soft play like for kids for toys and playing it's and great. puking up things yeah nice and washable <laughs> but when I started making garments I was like okay I have to kind of explore and learn some other yes. things now because I didn't want to make like a lot of acrylic sweaters because yeah. I'm more sensitive to like heat and I was gonna say acrylic's not super breathable it's not super breathable and um and the kind of sweaters I think that you make with acrylic yeah. are better if they're a little bit more flowy, yeah. like a higher gauge or stuff like yeah. that. And I was interested in making really like tight knit, yeah. close to skin kind of garments. And I was like, I'm sweating in this thing. <laughs> I have my um, very Vero mm-hmm. is acrylic. And like in Florida, even though it's very open, I only wear it really in the winter yeah. because even though it's like this really open kind of, it is hot as fuck. Like I had <laughs> it keeps never, you toasty. I had never even touched or like known about other fiber types until that, and I found knit picks. Oh yeah. And when I found knit picks, it was like game over for me because it's affordable. Yeah. This is going to sound like an ad. This is not an ad. I am not an <laughs> We are I not sponsored in by In no anyone. way affiliated with actually anything at all. I have no affiliation. I think I still have an affiliator link for like the crafters box. I was going to say that. Did but you get, like, I did it for like a month 
and I never did it again. I remember you at like the obligatory I, I post. Her, I was like, I was like, they made me post a thing, and I was like, I feel I don't feel right about posting <laughs> anything for like paid content. And yeah. I told her, I was like, I was like, I don't think I could do this. Tap it out. This life is not for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got so I I found knit picks and I like started buying kits. I still have some of the kits that I bought at the time, and I never used them, like mm. sweater kits. They're sitting in my stash over there, like so, like pattern and yarn all together. Yeah, yeah. So I had bought like stuff to make sweaters where they are like here's all the yarn for it here's the pattern you buy it and I have it still like this is yeah because I made some of them but then others have just See, been I'll buy kits but I'll I'll like choose to use that yarn I'm like oh but it would be so good for this I can't do and it. then I'll pick yarn from like something else and use it for that I never well I do sometimes end up using them together but See, you know, like, like, I get, I'm very fickle, and I'm just like, oh, but maybe I want to do this instead. I can't do it. Can't do it. I already bought the kit and the yarn for it the kit. It has to stay together. So now it's like, it's got to stay together, and brain, I like, can't use it reserved. for something else. It's reserved. <laughs> and I'm like, I keep telling myself, I'll get to it. I love the, the, the yeah. sweaters still are, I'm, I look, look at them, and I'm like, wow, they're still beautiful. I still want to make it yeah. one day. One day. But of course, I keep starting, you know, new ones. Um, and then, <laughs> it's eggsy. Um, then I found out like the indie dyeing world and I found, um, I started dyeing my own yarn. Yes. Which that was a big, like, she also spins. I, that came after too. So I'm like, I'm a like craft hopper. Mm -hmm. I did dyeing for what, a year maybe? Mm -hmm. A year and a half. And I was selling and everything. And I was like, I, this isn't fun. This is not fun, like washing the stuff in my kitchen, converting Monetizing my kitchen. Monetizing your hobby sometimes is the worst choice you yeah, can make. Yeah, <laughs> like turning the kitchen into a um, like like dye studio and then yeah. having to convert it back like on us every like other Saturday <laughs> <laughs> was just a nightmare yeah. for me as like a person who I barely like to clean on like yeah. a good day and it was just not fun. Um, and then I tried converting my basement into a permanent dye studio and it just didn't work out. Yeah. It didn't work out. I sold all my dye stuff. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, <laughs> and I had accum I've accumulated a lot in my stash and now I'm actually on like a, you know, pause from like, yes, kind of, buy I've been working from stash. I haven't really been buying, um, new and acquiring sure. more like dye hand dyed stuff. I still buy and no shame to people who do like to buy their yarn. Like, mm -hmm. if you buying yarn is your hobby, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. But it's also really cool to actually work from your stash, too. So Yeah, I just, I have too, I found, I, I like, I got to a too much point. Yeah. And I was like, I'm never going to knit all of this. And that level is different for everybody. But when you hit your limit, it's good, I to, hit my it's limit. good to take a pause. Um, But I still buy, like, because I've found that now my stash has stuff that doesn't work for other stuff that I yeah. want to make. So like now I'm pregnant, so I'm making a lot of little baby sweaters and nothing that I have currently like works yeah. for those projects. So I am finding myself buying like little skeins of like solid colors. But especially if it's project specific, like, you know, if you know. Yeah, I mean, if I had like, I don't, because everything I have is like sock kits that yeah. are like variegated, fingering weight right, right, right. yarn. For the, the most part, most of my stash is fingering weight, like, variegated yarns yeah. or speckled yarns and if I want to make like little baby sweaters then so I have made some I've, I've used some of it for that but they're so cute <laughs> but I want to use like like a lot of solids like yeah. pieces that you can use in different outfits and that are longer lasting and thicker not fingering weight um so that they're good for the winter yeah. time too because I live in a very cold place I'm I can attest to that <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah just you know, working oh. on that. So I have been trimming down my stash slowly. My, but I, my wool stash and my yarn stash, because I also, since I spin, have, have that too, yeah. a big wool stash. I have some of Abby's spun yarn too, which is really special. One of these days, I think I, I keep seeing it and like putting it together with other skeins because I want to make a, a shawl out of it. But then I'm like, mm, maybe I'll find something better for it. So one of these days, I will also have. It was like what a rose gold. Kind of, it is. Yeah. It's a bit frozen. You have nice. to show off your sweater. Yes. Look how gorgeous this is. With the poofy sleeve. They're show like poofy sleeve, poofy lace yes. sleeves. Lacy cables. La uh, I don't, is it, is it not, not a cable? cable? They're not cables. They kind of look cable. They look cable but they're just, um, Faux cable. they're like knit to, like, yeah. like slip slip so knit, pretty. knit. It's just lace. It's so pretty. 
This is the Aryan sweater. And I say, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I can't. I like it. There's an accent on the E. Aryan. Aryan. Yeah. Aryan. You can do the, you can do the, the accent and the, I'll just do it in New Jersey. Aryan sweater. A Aryan sweater. It's A-E <laughs> with an accent. A goo. Uh-huh. R-I-E-N. And it's by Aryan. Hohi Locatelli. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I love Hohi. Yes. And I modified it a little bit. It's a cropped sweater, but I, I made it longer. And I also sized it up so that I could wear it this winter with my with the preggy belly. My preggy belly. Um, and I like things a little bit more oversized. It is an oversized crop mm -hmm. initially. And then I sized it up again. Yeah. Um, and I made mine in Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. Full circle moment. <laughs> Full circle moment. And I bought the yarn fresh for it because I wanted it solid. Right, like right. I said, everything in my stash it's is speckled. And... Speckled. I didn't have anything that would work, yeah. you know, for this. And of course, it's fabulous. I think the color is called like cosmopolitan or something like that. For... That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. It's yeah. So just hot and pink. It's so soft. And actually, um, all the yarn to make this sweater, I want to say it was under $40. Hey, we love it. Like for the whole, mix. I think yeah. I did nine. I think I did nine skeins, eight or nine skeins. And Forty bucks. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It was like on sale. Oh. Yeah, when you shop. And they're normally sales. like they're. I think they're normally like a little bit cheaper, but then yeah. they were. It was on sale too. This color. So I. I think Knit Picks was the first non. Joanne's Michaels yarn that I did too, because my Grammy K mm -hmm. loved Knit Picks. She would. I mean, I like signed, I get the magazines too, but she would send me her copies uh -huh. to, I mean, she was 99 when she passed away like two years ago, but she sent me her, like, like would send packages yeah. of just the magazines thinking that I would want them. And she bought me my first, um, interchangeable needle set oh. and it was knit picks. I have two knit picks interchangeable I do sets. too. And they're short, the little, like the teeny tiny shorty ones. I don't, I don't do the shorties. I love them for certain pro Cause I don't, I use magic loop, but like for certain projects, it's just so nice whenever they're Yeah. Nice I can't knit with short stubbies. I can't knit with short needles. They hurt my hands. Oh yeah. Well, the nine inchers will do that to me too. Yeah. I have to have the, what is that? Five, five inches. <laughs> I think they're five. Come inches. on, we know what six Four. inches is. <laughs> I'm look, they, I the think problem is I don't actually. I have terrible. I think they're measurement five skills. Five I inches. I can measure them. I have them right here. Hold five on. inches. You like this bag six Chelsea inches. brought for me? It's I my do. Valentine's Day. We love Valentine's gnomes. Day. Wait, hold on. I have an. I think they're five inches. Let's see. Or are they four? Am I gonna be a liar? Oh, oh they're baby. five. They're five inches. <laughs> so wait, let's see. Six inches. Five. <laughs> I was just showing six. Oh, you wanted everybody to see six inches? Yeah. See what six inches look like. Yeah. There we but go. They're just five, <laughs> not four. How big are the shorties? Three. They're tiny. Three? I feel like they're like two. Oh. They're, they're really little. They're just like. I could not. And they come I in like a half it. size nubbin thing. Watch, they'll be like four. I have zero measurement skills. Like visual measurement, <laughs> spatial awareness, not for me. But yeah. So nitpicks, nitpicks is definitely uh, yeah. You know, one. and you know what it is. Um, they're pr like it's a pretty good like middle ground for being able to get like natural fibers mm -hmm. if you want to use them. Totally fine with. I like both. I like natural. I like acrylic. I like whatever you know. Yeah. We want to work with. Like, yeah. I'm not picky on that. Like, I will have anything next to skin, and um, nitpicks has like their wool of the Andes line. <gasps> And That's they're what I'm like, for my shelf. they're That's literally like me. two dollars a skein for yeah. hundred. It's a hundred percent wool. It's scratchy wool for that that particular yeah. line is scratchy, but it comes in like every color you can imagine. So if you are doing something like multicolor, it is um, non superwash. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing color work and you need felting, their wool of the Andes and their palette lines mm -hmm. are both non superwash wools that come in like every color of the rainbow, yeah. like. And more. That's why I picked. I was looking for very specific colors <clears throat> for my beachy shawl that I wanted to do, and uh, like everything was so fucking expensive. I, I really wanted to make it with a Florida dyer, so I was looking at Emma's yarn, mm -hmm. and it's gorgeous. But just knowing what I would need to make a bulky sweater, I considered. I, I was not able to put on my big girl panties and message them and see if they wanted to like just give me the yarn. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, it was really expensive and I didn't want to make any testers feel obligated to have to use it either. So I was like, let's go with something more affordable. And when I saw that and the colors, it's gonna be great. Yeah. 
it's gonna be great. Well, I wanna do some like, not rapid fire, but oh like gosh. some some fun questions okay. here. Okay, what's a better feeling? Casting on or binding off? Ooh, um, I really do love both. Could depend on what type of cast on or bind off them. That's true. <laughs> okay, I, I just meant like new project feeling, starting new I project, like, or like wrapping. I like wrapping up. a project up. <gasps> new, I'm a wrap up project. girl. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I like both, but I love the feeling of finishing. <gasps> Eggsy would like everyone to know that he has yet to be asked a single question. Oh, he's very upset about it. Would you Would you like to tell us? Okay, Eggsy, for you, new, pro or I'm sorry, new B-O-N-E or a P-O-T-T-Y-W-A-O-K? -okay. Which, which one? Which one's your jam, buddy? The bone? Oh, no, it was just, I said it. It was you just spell attention, it. really, that he wanted. Yeah, I'm just a little bit of an attention You guys are whore. talking to each other too much and nobody's looking nobody's at me. Nobody's looking at me. <laughs> nobody's telling me how beautiful I am and what a good boy. That's okay. We've got other animals here, too. This is Gizmet. And Eggsy, Bosco, where's the Sam I am? He's with Alex. Oh, there's there. one more running around somewhere. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> okay, so we're doing bind off for you, the finished product. Yeah, I, I just love, you know, and I love to weave in my ends. Like I, I do too, okay. That I was gonna love, be my other <laughs> I was gonna say. I love finishing a project and sitting there and weaving all those ends in and trim, and like that for me is like, <gasps> yes. Yes. I yes. enjoy the weaving and ends is soothing to me because you know it what you're is. doing. You just find them and you just weave them in. Yeah. But I, I, I really don't mind it. Like the last little baby sweater I made had so many because it was a fade. Right. So it had so many ends and I was like, okay, this is a little bit much. But I still, I sat there and, and put on an and audio to me, like, I'm like, you do like do those right away. When you yeah. bind off, weave the ends in like right away. If you let it sit, it's never going to happen. Right. If you want to weave them in, I mean, hey. Be chaos, I don't care. Like There's a lot of people who don't weave them in and all, and that's okay too. I just, I, I don't see what the issue is with it. However, my question to you was gonna be weaving in ends or making fringe. I don't do fringe. No, I do fringe. I love the finished result, but I fucking hate making I don't do fringe. I, I weave, and <laughs> I will do a fringe when I weave because you have to. Um, I mean, unless you like actually wanna sew down like the edges, yes. uh, but usually you finish your weaving off with yeah you know, yeah. fringed ends. So you don't actually, it's not, it's a little different because you don't have to, have to cut like all the individual pieces because yeah. they're already there. You just have to do the knots. What, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what kind of knot is it? I just usually do like the regular, you know, like one, two, three. Feet. What yeah. is it? Is it a square, a square yeah. knot? Is, is that, that it? it? I don't know. I don't know the names of knots. I don't know. The, the one that goes like a pretzel yes. and is done. Yep. The pretzel, pretzel knot. Pretzel knot. <laughs> Boy Scouts, Official you name. know. <laughs> um, and I will do it for I'll do it for woven things, but I don't do fringe for like no fringe. any other outfits. No. Okay. My yeah. cats would like. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sitting on the couch and do, it, you were pretty good though, Gizmo. But a couple of times, like whenever the straight it, and it, I mean it's tempting, it's tempting. But I'd be like, no, 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 no this project, don't do this. Right now. She also a... tried to eat one of my pearl beads on the project. Not like I would be feel really bad if she got it down her throat. But. I don't think he, I think he would just like. <laughs> choke on it a Hair little. Like, like, that would be great. Okay, <laughs> next question. Um, what is a knit or crochet technique that you've been dying to learn? Like, what, what's something that you'd really like to try? Just I haven't had time or... I don't you know. think there are any. I She's done like it I've all. Done it. I've done anything <laughs> that I... A little knit slut. <laughs> I have techniques that I've done that I don't like. Okay, tell us those. Like, ones. I don't like doing brioche at <gasps> all. Ooh, really? I hate doing brioche. I've only done I think it's one or beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Love the finished products. But you're not a brioche. But I hate doing a, it. A brioche. You know why? Because you have to do two passes for every row. And it makes me feel well, like I'm getting nowhere. Well. And it's one of those things that like all of a sudden you'll look at it and it'll be done mm -hmm. because you are making progress. But while it's happening, yeah. you just feel like nothing is growing. Right. And like the picture is, if, if you've got like something patterned in there, nothing's yeah. emerging. And I just like, I'm like, this is never gonna end. This is <laughs> never gonna end. I actually did a sweater. Um, uh, it was the Crea Bia. Um, Crea Bia? Crea Bia. Uh, what was the sweater called that I did? Yeah. The pink zip pullover that I made. Oh, I love that one, but I don't know the name of it. 
Oh, crap. I love it, though. Um, here, we'll insert the name here in the video. <laughs> I'm like, I can pull it up on my phone. Um, but she has it designed so you can do it in brioche. <laughs> Or you can do it in like the half fisherman rib, which right. is the same. Yeah. So I did it as the half fisherman rib and I modified the whole sweater so that I could knit it flat. Yeah. Instead of going in the round. Yeah. Because it's like harder for me to do it in the round. Yeah. Make it easier on yourself. So I was like, I'm just going to do it all flat and seam it up myself because I just, I would rather seam mm -hmm. than do brioche. I, it's a, I like seaming. I think seaming gives Love a lot it. of structure to tops and I don't know. I don't mind it. Whereas I know some people, especially with my designs, cause many of them are seamed. They're like, Oh my God, why wouldn't you just make this in the round? And I'm like, mm, cause I prefer it this way. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. All right. Final question. Okay. I'm like sweating. <laughs> no, it's, I feel I'm, we've I'm been like chilling, under but... the hot lamp. Yep. Like, you know. Like, huh. Is there either a yarn you've really wanted to try by, like a yarn dyer that you haven't got a chance to, or is there a pattern that you just don't, haven't had the time to do, but it's like in your queue and you really want to get to it? One of those things. Mm. You're like, no, I make everything I want and I buy the shit I need. I am kind of <laughs> like, uh, I do, I do that. Like I buy, I just Especially patterns. Like, yeah. I I want it. I buy it. I just get them. <laughs> um, because, you know, I, and especially like having friends that are designers. Supporting your friends so, and like, then you have a pattern collection. I do. And I and I usually like, even when I want to make something new, I, I don't always look at my library first, which is bad. But I like to, Same. I like to support my friends yeah. when they have new pattern releases. Or like sometimes I'll buy a pattern and like I, I don't even, like I don't plan to make it, but I'll buy it. Um, especially like... A lot of sock patterns that I buy, I'm like, I could make this without the pattern because yeah. I make so many socks that I'm like, I can look at it and be like, Abby is my sock guru. Yeah. Like anything I need to know about socks, I come to this gal. Because I know, I know like how many stitches I need to cast on for my size right. in socks. As long as they're like size one needles, fingering weight yarn. Yeah. I know exactly how many stitches are my cast on. Yeah. So... I don't necessarily need a pattern if I yeah. can figure out what the stitch pattern is, but I'll still buy it yeah. and I'll still like credit that pattern, even though I might do like a totally different heel because I know what heel I like right. and I might do a different toe. Um, but if I'm using their like their stitch pattern it, or like their little color work chart or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't usually do like with my color work socks, I do buy like pattern books for them because yeah. well, your orange socks were super Yes. They and were that, the Floridian. Uh, who is the designer? I don't know. I have the book over there for we'll insert <laughs> design. You can put a picture of the oranges. The orange they were socks. so cute. And there's a, I'll, I'll put the link in the uh, caption to the, the story behind the orange socks. Cause that was a good time. That was a good they time were my too. spite socks. They were very spiteful. I, I approve. <laughs> Stamp of approval. It's not that long of a story. I mean, let's I tell it. Let's my, tell it. <laughs> my husband told me that because um, I went into BJ's and I wanted oranges, and I, there's a bat. Like it's a bulk store. If you're not familiar with BJ's, uh, it's not. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it could be something else. Woo! <laughs> um, I wanted a bag of oranges, but it's a huge bag because yeah. it's a bulk store. And he's like, "That's ridiculous." Like we get to the car, and he was just like, "You're never gonna have." He didn't say anything while Challenge we were in the store. Accepted. He did not say a thing while we were in the store. And I bought a bag of grapefruits too. So yeah. I had a lot of citrus and he knows me. He was like, you're never going. He's like, that's ridiculous. You're never going to finish that amount of oranges before they go bad. And I was like, watch me. So not when she told what she was telling this. I'm like, Abby, I don't care if you have to throw them out or drink entirely. You better not leave a single well, citrus behind. I was him. really craving oranges and I really, um, I had just bought an orange juicer. Yeah. Too, so I really wanted fresh squeezed orange juice. So I was like, let me get a whole bag. Um, and so not only did I finish all the oranges and grapefruit, but she also, <laughs> but I knit, I knit these socks that Chelsea will put in, but I sent her a picture. It was like, color Abby, <laughs> you have to make these socks. They're color work socks of oranges. <laughs> And you have to, you should wear them while sipping the last, I said while like biting the last orange when Alex no, I, comes home. I like put a bunch of orange, like I cut some of the oranges up yeah. as like the backdrop when I take yeah. pictures of the socks. There's just a bunch of like cut oranges. And I said, how do you like those apples? How do you like them oranges, Alex? <laughs> he was like, I hate you. 
<laughs> it was a good time. But yeah, those are the infamous orange socks. And I just think they're so cute. And I will eventually make a pair because I need some Florida citrus socks. Yes, color, <clears throat> color work socks are tricky to do if you are not used to A, making socks and B, making small circumference color right. work. So you do just have to like, you, you can't, with most socks, you want negative ease. Mm. With color work socks, you can't really have negative ease. They have be to be so tight on your toes. Yeah, because of the floats in the background, they have to be like flush to your foot. So you, if you're looking for, if you like your socks to be tight mm. and you like your socks to be like like a lot of negative ease, then color work socks are probably not going to be comfortable for you. Mm. But they're also thicker because they're double yarn. Yeah. Um, and the yeah. other thing is, you, you, um, I always recommend knitting them inside out. Because then your floats are around the outside. Yeah. And that gives them a little bit more of a stretch so that you can get them over your heel. Yeah. Especially if you have high arches. It can be Abby really helped me out with the heel. What can be what's the heel that we do? I did the one that you did you in did, your stories. Um did you do the it was the German short row heel. Yes. It was a German short row heel. Yeah, and if you're new to socks, I did a Spooky Sockathon back in October, but I followed Abby's techniques for the toe up cast on mm -hmm. and then the German short row heel. And if you go to her Instagram and in her story highlights, you can find those and she yeah. does really good classes. It's just on called those. sock class. It's three videos that are each one hour and I did it as a live on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, so you're like doing it with her. Right. So I like knit the sock in the Which three is really parts. fun because then you get to hang out you with Abby. You just hear me for, talking like, the whole it's time nice. about like you know, nothing, just bullshitting. I poloed her afterwards and I was like, I just hung out with you for an hour. <laughs> but it's so I did the toe in the first class. So mm -hmm. it shows you how to do a Judy's magic cast on right. and how really to easy. increase your toe stitches. Um, and then uh, after that, you're just knitting straight until you get to the heel. So I was like, knit mm -hmm. yourself to the heel, then go to the second video. The second video is just the heel. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, how to do that German short row heel. And then the third video, and, and after you do the heel, you also just knit straight. It's yep. the same amount of stitches. Um, you go up until you reach your height, and then you do your ribbing. Yep. And then the third video is how to do the bind off. And I did two bind offs. I did either the super Jenny super stretchy bind off, what I used, or the sewn bind off, which is what I use. Yeah. I prefer the sewn bind off for socks. I do think it looks neater, but Jenny super stretchy bind off is faster. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, the Jenny super stretchy is just too, too stretchy. Um, it's too open yeah. and the sewn bind off, I feel like is much, uh, I, I, it always works better for me yeah. for, um, for toe up socks. Um, but, but you, you know, have good choices then. You have some people don't like to sew. So yeah. I'm not, I, I feel like Kitchener every time I have to look up the instructions. I've done it a million times and yeah. I still need it stare. At least just the start, like those first two stitches to start. I don't know why. And then I kind of like. Get yeah, into I'm it, at the but... like memorized, full memorized because it makes so many I'll socks. I'll need it forever. Yeah, <laughs> I'll always need. It doesn't matter how many I do. I'm um, just always gonna need it. Oh, and that that class uses the free Tannis Lovely trusty toe up socks pattern. So if you don't want to watch the class and you just want a good toe up sock pattern, especially if you're doing self striping, Ooh. it's a fantastic pattern. And I did have her permission to use that for right. the class. So. And Abby also did a good job, like when you were talking about like how, cause a couple people were asking during the live, like how did you get your stripes even? Or how did you like save the color work? And she talked about like measuring them out and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's a really good class to watch. But my sock guru, Abby, thank you so much for doing the Maker interview and of for course. having me at your house and for love. I love you so much. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, this was Weekend at Abby's. And the next time I visit a fun yarny friend, we'll do another one of these. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Woo! <laughs> it's still so frothy. How is it still so frothy? Well, y'all, we did it. And I have to give myself a huge pat on the back. I was scared of making this episode. And just after my, my funky depression, I call them funks. They are depressive bouts. But um, I was just scared to get back into it. I thought maybe... Maybe I would suck at it. Maybe I suck talking to you guys. And if you think that, please don't tell me. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> but I really was uh, very nervous and I'm glad that I picked today because today was the day to do it. I need to film these on days when I'm feeling like me. And not that, not that there's anything bad about who I am during depressive funks and anything, but I just, I don't mind sharing the negatives with you. I just don't like 
having that and I don't want to bring you all into that energy with me. So please forgive me for taking some time off, but I think it was worth it. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. Per usual, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment, share it with a friend. One of my goals this year is to uh, grow my YouTube. Maybe you reach monetization on here, but honestly to connect with more people that enjoy long form videos, that enjoy booze and mental health and knitting and crochet and self love and smut, and all those fun things. So if that's you, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Cheers.